Hi there, this is Iden Such with my Rainbow Loom tutorial for Prince Cornelius from Thumbelina. And you'll see I have a pattern out for Thumbelina and for Giacomo already. For this pattern, you're going to need gold or yellow bands for the wings, and I'm going to show you using yellow this time. You're going to need yellow for the arms, skin tone, I'll be using the tan color, brown bands or beads for the eyes, and you're welcome to use white beads and draw peoples on. Uh, light brown for the hair. A couple of gold or yellow bands. And if you have a bead or charm you'd like to use here, you're welcome to do that. And I'm going to be using a purpley maroon for the shoes and parts of the outfit. And red bands for, again, the tunic. And orange bands for the legs. To make the sword, we use a paper clip and just some kind of crafting pliers. You're going to want a couple of C-clips, your loom in the offset configuration, a couple of holding hooks, and mm, I think those are most of the notes. I will be doing one wing with you and having you pause for the other, but everything else we'll be doing together. And I think we're ready to begin. So let's start by taking, getting your hook ready and you're going to take two skin tone bands, put them on the end of your hook, twist them, unwrap them once, twice, and three times, and pull this onto two more skin tone bands. Put the other end on and we're going to slide this onto seven sets of yellow bands. Oh, double yellow bands, so two bands. It's going over and we're gonna do this six more times. If you're wondering why I've changed the color for the wings, it's mostly because I'm running low on my gold bands, but also this gives you a chance to see uh, how our prints would look with a different shade. This is one of those patterns um, I find with a lot of the Disney characters, depending on the on the frame and the lighting and what's, what's going on, the colors can look a little bit different. So you might find you don't have a maroon, but you might have a nice brown that matches that matches better. So you use what you have, and I think there's a little bit of flexibility with a character like Prince Cornelius. I'm trying to I'm trying to stay close to the shading I saw in one one of the frames, but you've got to work with what you have. Let's go on to the second arm. You can leave this where it is or put it onto a holding hook. We're going to take another two skin tone, wrap them one, two, and three times onto the hook. Pull it onto two skin tone bands. And then once more, we're going to put this onto seven sets of double yellow bands. As I said, you can leave them where they are or put them on another hook and we're going to make the feet and then the legs. So to make our shoe, we take a single band, wrap it one, two, three, four times on the hook. I'm using the purpley maroon here. We're going to put this onto a doubled over single. So take another purple, stretch it, twist it, pull one end over the other, put it on the end of your hook and slide your wrap band over. Take two purple bands, slide the bands from your hook onto that, or the band I guess because it's just a doubled over single. Make sure that all goes over so it slides nicely. And before you replace the end, uh, I'll show you the easier way here. Okay, put the other end back, even it out. Take a single, wrap it on the end of the hook one, two, three times, four times, you want it a little tighter. And we're going to take the first part of the shoe we made and stretch the side that's closest to the end of the hook over the wrapped band so that it now sits in the middle. 
and this is going to go onto two bands. Put them on the end of your hook and carefully slide it. Try to keep the order. This is always the hardest part is to keep it from sliding one piece over. Even it out a little and we're going to put this onto a doubled over single and onto we're switching to the leg color, the pants color. I'm using a light orange and we're going to place this onto six sets of double orange bands. Oops. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm just going to push this down on my hook a little bit and we'll make the other one. Go a little faster this time with a single purple wrapped one, two, three, four times. Pulled onto a doubled over single. Which doesn't want to go over. There we go. Oops. And then we're going to put this onto two purple bands. Put the other side on and slide this down a little. Take a single, wrap it on the end of the hook, one, two, three, four times, and pull one side of your previously looped piece over so that your wrapped one's in the middle. Put this all onto two more purple bands. Kind of have to have nails for this, huh? And slide that evenly, and this all goes onto a doubled over single. And then on to six sets of double orange bands. And last set. Try and find two that aren't too stretched here. So once you have your arms and legs ready, you can set this to the side and we're going to come to the loom. We want the arrow pointing down or the, you want basically to look up and see the letter C facing you all the way down. We're going to take two skin tone bands, come from the top center peg to the second peg down in the center and find the color you want for the upper part of your shirt. I'm using the purple maroon again. Bring two of those bands from your second peg in the center to your second peg on the side and repeat that for the other side. We're going to come down once on each row or once in the middle row from the second to third peg with double purple bands and then twice down on either side, double purple bands. And this takes you to the fourth peg down on the sides. Now we're switching to the color, the main color of the tunic, and I'm using red. So we'll get those ready, and we're going to come down the center. Let's count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times with double red bands in the middle. Two, three, four. And on either side, we're going to come down one, two, three, four, five, and six times with double red. So we'll start at the fourth peg down and continue there from there six times. Oops. Two. Six. This is going to end just below the middle row, and we'll repeat that for the right side. Two. 
we're going to switch to our purple again and we want to take a single purple stretch it double it over and we're going to come from the last peg that you used on to the next one which is a third peg from the bottom of the loom or counting downwards we've used the first 10 pegs and we're going from the 10th to the 11th we're going to do this again on the center row doubled over single and again on the far side okay let's take two purple bands and get them ready you're gonna get your hook with the arms and the legs slide both of your oops Sorry, one more thing to do. Let's take off one leg. And the other leg is going to go onto two purple bands. Replace. And we'll do this for the opposite leg here. So if you look at the picture here, we have um, one more set of double bands on each leg, and it's the color of your pants, or at the bottom of the tunic, I should say. Now we're going to take these and slide them, both legs, onto two purple bands. Stretch that across the third peg from the bottom on one side to the third peg from the bottom on the opposite side. So it's going over the last pegs that we used and stretch the legs up over the center peg so that they're sort of separated and it's going to work as a holding band. And we're ready to put on our, oh, our holding bands and we have one thing to do before our arms. So for our holding bands we're just going to use single triangles. So take a purple band, go to the peg above the peg that the legs are on, so this is your 10th peg down, and you're going to stretch it across the 10th peg down on each row, so it's going to make a triangle, and repeat that on the sets above, so across the 9th pegs, across the 8th pegs, and we're using red for the rest of the body here, you want to match it to the dominant color on the side. Okay, and the, on the third pegs down, I'm going to use purple again because we have purple on the sides. And just before we put on our arms, let's make the little shoulder pieces. These are optional, but it, it adds to the character. It's Again, we're trying to go for accuracy. So these aren't bad to do. Let's add them on. Take a single purple, wrap one, two, three times. Pull onto two bands, also purple, and lay that from your top peg down on the side to your second peg down on the side. And we're going to make one for the right side, the far side. Single wrapped one, two, three times, pulled onto two bands. And stretch from the first peg down to the second peg down and it sits right on top of the bands that are there already. And we're going to take our arms and transfer each one to the second peg down on either side. And we're just the sides here. And we're ready to loop. So let's turn our loom around. We're approaching it from the feet. We'll start at the side. We're gonna, it doesn't really matter where we start, but we'll start at the side. You want to get the doubled over band that's sitting at the bottom and coming from the peg above. So take your hook, open part facing up away from you, push back the band that's holding the legs on and pull your doubled over band carefully onto the peg above. Push back everything but the bottom two reds and pull those up and over. We're going to loop like this until we have looped onto the arms and then just stop there for a minute. Okay, so once you get to that second peg, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of loop backwards. You're going to get your hook into the band that's on the top side peg and pull it down over the arm. And then we reach inside the arm, find the bottom two purple, only the bottom two purple, which is always a bit of a challenge here. And we're gonna bring those to the second peg down in the center. And then we can loop up the other side in the exact same way. So get your doubled over band and bring it forward, loop straight up to the arm, bottom two bands only. You can always turn your loom or pull the bands up to the side if you're having a hard time getting a grip on them or eyeing them out.
when you get to the arm and you've looped onto that second peg down, we take the shoulder piece and pop that down onto the second peg, right on top. So it sits over it and we go in for the bottom two and loop those to the second peg down in the center. Come back to the bottom again, go to the third peg from the bottom of the loom in the center and grab the doubled over single and loop it forward and we loop straight to the top of the loom now. If you find you have a lot of tension on your loom, feel free to release some of it by taking off some of the lower, some of the lower already looped bends. Just watch that you've got it looped already for sure. And reach through all of the purple for your bottom two skin tone and bring those forward. And keep a, a grip on your top center peg or take those top bands off and secure them with um on a hook or on a c-clip and we can take the rest of our figure off of the loom and we always start at the top and the sides and we work our way inwards and downwards so always I'll, I'll make a note here if you see any loose bands while you're going try and grab them try and fix it or just secure them on the side as you go before they become a problem because you know sometimes they sometimes they can. When you're ready, put your hook through the bounds on the top center peg and release the rest of your figure. Okay. So both sides should look about the same, but if you have one you prefer for the front or the back, just bear it in mind. Um, we'll we'll do our detail work later. For now, I think we will put our head and our face together and then we can finish things up. So let's go to the layout for our head and we're going to start, actually I'm going to start by transferring this to another hook just because I like this hook for Lumen. Here we go. Okay. So pick the brown you want for your hair. We're going to take two bands. This part is optional, this is, gives the added little fluff at the top. Two bands, put them on the hook, wrap them once twice. You can do it three times if you want to. Pull it onto two brown bands and bring it from the top center to the top side. Repeat this for the opposite side. Two bands wrapped once and twice. Three times if you want it tighter, but you, we will be pulling through these again, so just bear that in mind. This goes from your top center peg to the top peg on the opposite side. On each of the rows will come down twice with double bands. Is all brown still, all your hair color. And we're, we'll switch to skin tone and come down three times in the center with double skin tone bands and twice on either side. Hold that up for you in just a minute. skin tone bands and bring them in from either side to either center so fifth side peg to your sixth center peg and do that again for the opposite side and we are going to use doubled over singles here so that our face stays nice and tight so take a skin tone twist stretch it twist it bring it back over itself and we'll place that across the third pegs down this again for the next set, the fourth pegs down, and once more below that. Okay, for our top holding band, you can double it over, or like me, you can just stretch out a single across and not double it. For the eyes, you can thread beads on, as I did in the first case, if you're doing beads. You can pop them onto your hook and transfer them, or what you can do is take both of your eyes, run them through a piece of floss or whatnot, put it onto a skin tone, and then come 
I'll just show you this quickly as an option. And then come back over and back through the bead for your eye. Okay, so that's one method you can use. I'm just gonna use a couple of wrapped bands this time. So what that looks like is you're gonna take your eye band, wrap it one, two, three times, push it over a little, take your second one, wrap it one, two, three times, and pull both onto a single skin tone band. I'm gonna lay this across the th from the third peg on one side to the third peg on the other side. And I want to get between the eyes. And I think we're pulling it over. Let me just check that. Over or under? Yeah, I pulled it over. So get your hook in between that band and pull it up over the third peg down in the center. We're going to add a little extension for the hair so it's a little bit puffier and then we'll be ready to add the body. So take a single brown band, wrap it once and twice on your hook, and pull it onto two sets of double brown bands. So we'll make just a short little chain here. You're going to take the cap band, so the first wrapped band, and place it onto the third peg down on the side and then transfer the bands from your hook onto the top side peg. And then we're gonna take a single band out of the interim chain and pull it over the second peg down. And that keeps it nice and tight. And the reason I like to pull my, my cat band onto that third peg before I go for the one that's already on my hook is because, um, it's because this one can come loose, that one can't. So I'll just show you the other way. And you can do it either way. It doesn't really matter as long as you get them both on. If I take my bands from the hook and transfer those to the top peg first, now I have to really hold on and make sure this doesn't come off while I'm securing the cap band onto the third peg down. So it's just a little trickier because I don't want to place this on and have this pop off at the same time. I hope that makes, makes sense. But there isn't, I don't think there's really a right or wrong way. They're going to end up in the same place. Let's take the body face up and place the bands that are on your hook onto the sixth peg down in the center. It looks so floppy. Uh, if you need to, you can stretch this over a nearby band, a nearby peg, and we're going to reach underneath, get the top two skin tone bands and bring them to the right. The next two, bring them to the left, and the last ones go up. We're going to loom straight up on each of the rows. So we'll start with the center and just loop straight forward. There shouldn't be anything in your way here. We'll go straight to the top of the loom. And on on the side closest here, we're going to reach in for the bottom two, loop those forward, push back your holding band, bottom two, loop those forward, push back all but the bottom two brown, and bring those forward, and one more time to the top. And now what we want to do is get the bottom two and lift them up and over, and get those ready. And then we're going to reach with our hook through the looped or wrapped bands that we placed on that from that top peg. You're going to grab the band from inside the top side peg and pull it through and onto the center top peg. Show you one more time for the other side here. So loop up those bands. I'm going to turn this around for a better grip, a better angle here. Put your hook through the wrapped bands. Take the bands from the top side peg, like the bottommost bands, and bring them through the wrapped and onto the top. If you're having a terrible, terrible time, just skip the step, pull those, pull that band off, and take that piece right off. It's it's okay. It's it's really just for added effect here. It'll make it a tiny bit thicker. Take a single band, or if you want, you can take a couple of bands. Um, the more bands you put, the thicker it will be and the more secure. But if you just if you want to save bands or just have a thin top, that's fine to use one. Get those ready in your left hand. With your right hand, you're going to put your hook through the bands on the top center peg. 
you're going to point the open part away from you, grab your bands, band or bands to secure, and slide those up through. Put the other end on, and we'll pull one side over the other to create a slip knot. Now don't lose these, you can put them on a C-clip, on a hook, or just on your finger as I'm doing. And we'll remove Prince Cornelius from the loom. We want to keep the open part of the hook pointed away from us as we do this. And again we'll start uh, upwards and sidewards and move our way down. Oh, bother. I better Okay, sorry about that. I caught, um, caught a couple loose bands there. I guess I must have missed looming something, looping something up. So it's all fixed, it's all done. We're back where we were and we take this off of the loom. Decide which side you want for the front and push your eyes. Make sure your eyes are facing the right direction. And your holding bands, securing bands can go into the back. So I'm gonna go under a couple of bands near where my securing band is and slide those through. These can go onto a C-clip. So we can do some of our finishing touches now. I'm just going to let this sit for the moment. And can give everything a little adjustment here. For the button, if you have a bead or a charm, you can put that onto a piece of string, thread, wire, floss, whatever, and tie it on. Or you can transfer it onto a band and do what we do here with the band. So I'm going to show you a gold band instead of a bead. I'm going to wrap it three times, put it onto a purple band, and what I'm going to do is reach through right under the purple in the center, take one side of that band and pull it to the back. You can put this on a C-clip now or um, a different holding hook if you want or just leave it where it is. And I'm going to reach through a little bit higher and take the other side above the gold band or bead and carefully slide that to the back. And then we can put one over the other and this can go on a C-clip as well. Actually, let's tuck this in a little better there. Alright, so you can always make this a little tighter if you want um, or wrap it more times. Maybe you have a band that's a little tighter too. For the belt, we're going to take four purple bands, stretch them out a little bit, and slide it over the legs into the center of the body. Or, well, wherever you want it to sit for his waist here. And to secure it, we're going to use our gold band. So take your gold band, or again a bead if you like, wrap it one, two, three times, or tighter, put it onto a purple band. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the, the cloak clasp or whatever the supper one is. So we go in above the belt, try and get as centered as you can. Take one side of the band holding your bead or gold band on it, pull it through. Then we reach in under the belt, and you might want to put that back piece on a holding hook again, and take the other side and slide that to the back. So now your belt is secured, your band is on, your waist is cinched. Let's put this onto, let's just get this untwisted, pull one side over the other, put that onto a C-clip. So you can see I'm using many C-clips. If you want to save some of your C-clips, what you can do is take one of your, take one of the bands you're securing, go under a nearby band, pull one over the other, go through another nearby band, pull one over the other, and you can keep doing this until you reach your next C-clip. So if I wanted, I could secure this right up here and take one of these out because now it's looped to the center. So I think we have just two more things. We'll do the wings and, and then I'll show you how to do the sword. So I told you I'm doing one wing with you and having you make the other one yourself. We're going to have a large piece and a small piece. So for the large one, you're going to take your wing color, start at the top with double bands, go down to the right, another two down to the left from the top center. And we're coming down six times with double bands on the far side and in the center. So we'll just start with the far side here and do it one thing at a time, I guess. So three sets of double bands and four.
five, and six. In the center, we do double, six sets of double bounds again. And the left side is going to be just a touch shorter. This has to do with the way that the that the loom is angled. Now, please, F you, if you like, of course, you can experiment by making one side longer than the, like, much, much longer than the others if you want it pointier. Um, if you want the wing itself to go higher, you can always add a couple of rows, a row or two to each of your columns here. We're going to come down only five times with double bands on the left side. Take two bands and come from your sixth peg down on the side to your seventh peg down in the center. And from there, two bands to the seventh peg down on the far side. Take a single band and we're going to cap the seventh peg down on the, the side that had the six bands. Sorry, six sets. And you want to wrap it at least three times. If you can get it a little tighter, that's all the better. Folding bands, we're just using singles. Uh, if you want this to be a little thicker, sturdier, you can use double bands. And if you want it to be a little tighter and again firmer, you can use doubled over singles. I'm just going to take single bands and stretch them across in triangle formation. So over the second pegs down, third pegs down, fourth pegs down, fifth pegs down, and once more below on the six pegs. We're ready to loom. So go underneath the cat band on the far side, take the next two bands and pull them to the center and take the two top ones from the center there and pull those to the side. And then we're going to loop up each of the rows, bottom two bands only. And it doesn't matter terribly much which, which order you loop the rows in because this is going to be on the back, we're not going to see it. So whether you have your side ones on top, which I'll do here by taking my top side peg bands and bringing them to the top center, or whether you have your center uh, center bands on top, it's, it's not going to matter too, too much. So I'm looping up the center, and then I'm going to go and loop up on the far side. I'll show you the small wing, the small part of the wing in just a minute. It's very similar to this. It's just going to be a little bit shorter. And yeah, so we're almost done the first one. And you can make the second one in just a minute. Take a single, get it ready, band, uh, peg, bleh, hook through the bands on the top center peg, pull your securing band through, put one side over the other to create your slip knot and remove from the loom. This is going to look really short for now, but like it looks kind of small at first, but it will be a nice size once we've got it on the back. Okay, there's one. And once you have your second one, come back and we'll make the little one for the bottom. Okay, our bottom one, we start the same way. Two bands from the top center to the top side and same to the opposite side. Come down with three sets of double bands on this far side and on the center. You're gonna love this, it's so fast and easy. And three, and two sets of double bands on the side closest to you here. Two bands from the third side peg to the fourth center peg, and come down again diagonally from the fourth center peg to the fourth peg on the far side. Single holding bands again, stretch them out one at a time, over the second pegs down and over the third pegs down. We just need to cap off the fourth peg down on the far side. One, two, two, three times. And the tighter the better, but don't worry about it too, too much. 
We're going to loop up, go under the cap and pull to the center. Get your next top two in the center. And we're going to bring them to the side. And then you can pick a row and loop straight to the top. And make sure that you bring in the bands from the top side pegs to the top center. And last row here. And back inwards from the top side to the top center. Grab a securing band. Slide it through the bands on the top center peg. Pull one side over the other and remove this all from your loom. So to put our wings on here, we're going to take our figure, turn him around, we'll get the two wings ready here, like the two larger wings for the top. I'm going to take one, put my finger through the loop just to hold on to it, and I'm going to, let's see, let's place this, um, I'm going to look at this first set of loops here, maybe just underneath, I'll go through a couple of bands going to pull the hoop through those bands, stretch it out, and bring it over the wing. And we're going to tighten this in a little bit more in just a minute. If you want it to be sitting lower, like if you want to attach it down here, that's fine too. Totally up to you. I'm going to do the same for the other side and try and keep it close. Go through a couple of bands, pull the securing yellow band or gold band through, and pop it over the wing. Then what we do is we position them where we want them. You're going to put your hook through a piece of one wing, piece of the back. You can put it through a couple if you want. And through the next wing. You can pick a color of your choice. I'm just going to use yellow again. Place it on the hook and slide it through all of the bands that are now on your hook. one side over the other and you can put this onto a c-clip and that will secure it. So let me put this on a c-clip. You can use the c-clip that you already have on your body if you have one handy too. And you can always tighten this in a second spot if you still feel it's loose. I know some bands are a little stiffer than others so you'll, you'll figure that out. Like these gold ones are very very sturdy. They d didn't need a lot of adjustments there. And the bottom ones, we're going to do the same thing. Get one ready. Turn to the back. Get your hook under a couple bands where you want it to sit. Slide it through. So put your yellow securing band on the hook. Slide it under the body bands. Pop it over the top of that. We'll do the opposite side. This is the last one for these. And again, if you feel they're very floppy or you want them to sit a certain way, we can go through. I'm going to I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go through one of my bottom ones, the other bottom one. Um, this isn't really trying. This is the same thing. We're going to take a yellow, pull it through. Go. I'm going to see what happens if I pull this over both of the wings. See if that secures it a little tighter. Anyway, so you can play with that a little bit. Um, adjust them in closer where you like. Those are his wings. And I will really quickly show you uh, how to make the little sword. So we take our paper clip and if you want, well let's unfold it a bit first. So it's just a standard size here. If you want to, you can take a gray or silver band and wrap it a few times like so. Grab one here. You can wrap it a few times if you want over it and just squish that into the top section to make it look a little bit bigger. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to take our pliers and sort of give this whatever shape we want. So let's 
maybe round that out a little bit. Place it where you want to place it. You might want to twist it inwards or uh, if depending on how thick your wire or paper clip is, you might be able to shape it around a pen or a pencil. Use like a, a mandrel kind of thing. And just adjust it until it's the size and shape that you like. You can fit it in wherever you want it to sit. And yeah, if you have again any beads you want to fit on the top, that's fine too. Now I think we're all done. Let me lay these down and pull the camera up and you can see there is Prince Cornelius. Please check out my, my Giacomo and Thumbelina. They're really cool. They're on my channel already. I'll put it on a playlist. And thank you for watching.